Alrighty, here we go. So today is August 25th and we do not have a buoy 10 update today and that's because I was not on the water. However, we're going to be doing a little tech tip here on how to build a spinner. Now, whether you're fishing down here in the buoy 10 fishery in the estuary or our upriver targeting schnook uh, with the 360 flashers with a smaller spinner behind it, spinners are a great way to catch schnook and coho alike. But there are a lot of different color combinations, blade styles to consider and we're going to go through that here today. I'd like to do a full tutorial, but right now we're going to just try and trim this down as quickly as we can, just because there's only so much time. The internet here is not the best, and so I need to keep them around five minutes, otherwise it takes hours upon hours to upload them. So let's get right down to it. First, let's start with blade design. So there's several different blade designs that exist out there. The most common ones that we use as salmon fishermen are the Cascade, which is this guy right here, elongated, pointed on both ends. It's also called a Mag Willow. And for the guys fishing the 360 flashers, the Colorado blade is the most common one. The one that I like to use a lot is called an Indiana blade, and that's because it's kind of a cross between the two. And each one of these blades has its own purpose. They're each designed for different water speeds. Now, what's curious to me is that most people behind their 360 flashers are running a Colorado blade. However, the Colorado blade, because of its design, is actually actually has more drag going through the water has a larger surface area for its size cascade blade is what we're seeing a lot of the 360 spinner manufacturer companies out there starting to go to because it is actually a faster water design blade and again that's why i like the indiana is because it's kind of a blend between the both blend between the two so um uh, blade finishes you have your full paint, uh, painted blades like this guy here. And that one there is from Fishfield. They have a pretty cool paint design on both sides. You have your candy backs. Do I have a candy back? I gotta have a candy back. There's candy back, candy back, candy back. Oh, here we go. You have your candy backs, which is like a metallic color on the back. There you go. And then you have your copper, silver, gold, uh, chrome, and nickel. And each one of those will kick out a different glow in the water. For example, these three, yeah, we'll use this one here. These three are all different finishes. This one is your matte silver. This one here is your nickel. And then your polished silver. And they're each going to create a different color, a different profile in the water. This matte silver I like to use a lot during low light conditions because it kicks out white. Whereas if you use, say, chrome and nickel, they're going to kick out a green or blue reflection. But all in all, you just need to pick a color that you personally like the best. Um, I like to use Hildebrand blades as much as I can just because I like their finishes. They just are a lot cleaner. The, their copper finishes are just beautiful. They don't tarnish up on, uh, real quickly especially here in the, in the salt water and uh, Hildebrandt, they make them pre-painted like this. But what I actually personally do is I go and I buy the Hildebrandt blades at the store and at your local tackle shop. And then I take them to a paint shop to go get them custom painted to the, the color combinations that I like. Uh, for me, I live in the Portland area. So there's a place called BC Angling Post. I take all my blades over there to Bill and he comes up with whatever color combinations I want and then custom paints them for me. Just like that right there. So, or one of the ones that's been doing pretty good for me this year. Sunrise, just like the quirky color. So you can take this to an extreme. And if you saw all of the spinner stuff I got laid out, it's pretty insane. I absolutely love spinner fishing, but that's because you can build something. Then the next day out there on the water, take it out and go catch fish on it. Pretty cool. It, it creates some ownership. You have some skin in the game. And then when you have success with it, it's fantastic. So what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to build a copper pink spinner. Copper seems to me a pretty good uh, blade finish to use in this water temperature in the high 60s, low 70s. It also seems to work pretty well in the brackish water where you get a little bit of salt and pink. Heck, you can't go wrong with pink, especially for coho that like pink, orange or red and any type of uh, silver, copper or gold finish. So first we're going to start out with our wire. And your wire can be 0 0.030 to 0 0.040. Um, you get a little bit too thick and you can't get your clevis or your bearing beads into it. So 0 0.030 to 0 0.040 wire. 
Now there are two different wires you can get. This one here is just bare wire. You can also get them with the loop already pre-tied in it. I like to do it from top to bottom. So this is the way I do it. There's a lot of ways to do it, but I'm gonna show you the way that I personally build a spinner. So I start off by taking my little spinner wire twister and leave just a little bit of room there on the end and start to spin it, create my loop. Again, I'm gonna do this kind of quickly here just cause I got a time crunch for a YouTube video. Put my hook on and I'm gonna twist it up, get my hook into place. Okay. Now I'm gonna trim off some of the excess wire now that I have my hook in place. Don't need this whole strand to make one spinner, so I'm gonna trim it down. That should be plenty here for this spinner. Now next is your tubing. Now this is more designed to keep your hook in place, which helps with your spinner tracking properly. If your spinner gets too much wobble, or isn't uh, pulling straight, these treble hooks act as a rudder and that spinner tubing will help keep that rudder in place. That way your spinner will track better. So I'm gonna lengthen out here the right amount, pull out my scissors, trim them up. There we go, slide it on. Now, in some cases, you can do just the bare tubing like that, add some beads to it, and you're good to go. Um, Co, especially here in the salt, they like as much bling as possible, so I'm going to add a tinsel skirt and then a hoochie here as well. So, tinsel skirt goes on. Hoochie goes on. Make sure you got all the legs of the hoochie around that tinsel skirt. There we go. And pull it down tight. Okay, now we are in good shape. There we are. There we go. Okay, so that is my start right there. Next, we're going to add beads. Now, for your larger spinners like your uh, size 5s to size 7s, you can use your 8 millimeter beads like so, but what I like to use for these smaller spinners, size three and a half, size fours, are a six millimeter bead. It just helps with that balance. Balance is very, very important when it comes to building a proper spinner. So I'm gonna grab a couple six millimeter beads here. And I'll tell you what, you can go crazy with beads. Um, there's a place in Tiger right next to Fish Field called Bead Bullies that I go to up in Washington. I go to Shipwreck Beads. I order a lot of beads online. These are all my high-end beads here, your Swarovski beads, your, you know, I can show them to you. Oh, don't spill them. Everything from wedding rings to magic eye beads to Swarovskis to you name it, metallic beads. You can take it to an extreme to say the least. So, um, I'm just gonna throw on a couple of clear pink beads here, make it simple. And then a bearing bead, which is very important. And then my copper pink here, size four Hildebrandt copper pink. Okay, now that I got that on there, uh, a couple quick notes here. What you want to make sure, let me grab this hook here. Okay, so what you wanna make sure you do is choose a hook size that matches your blade. So what you want is your hook points to be on the outside of your blade, just like that. If it's too small or too large, that again will throw off the balance. You see a lot of spinners out there on the market where they have like a one-aught hook with a size three and a half spinner. And yes, that will help you not bend down as many hooks. But in my opinion, that throws off the balance substantially. It's not gonna run, run as right, just back your drag off a little bit. And these smaller hooks will work just fine. So again, match your spinner blade to the hook size. 
hook points just on the outside of the blade. And then for spacing, you want to make sure, in fact, let me twist this up real quick. And I will show you about spacing for your blade and balance. Almost done. Okay, there we go. Spinner is all tied up. And now before I go any further, I want to trim up this skirt here, just like you do on a steelhead jig. These coho are notorious for short striking. So I'm going to trim that up right at the back of the hook. There we go. So. Now my spinner is complete. And I'll pull this up here and show it to you a little bit tighter. There we go. So now that the spinner is built here, we have the proper hook size for the spinner, but we also need the proper spacing. And that is you want the bottom of the blade to be at the top of the eye of the hook. Let's see if I can pull this skirt up a little bit. There we go. So there is the top of the eye of the hook. And the spinner blade that gets pulled down is right there. There we go. So that's bottom of the spinner blade is right at the top of the eye of the hook. Now, what you don't want to do, and I see this happen all the time, are people putting beads up above the clevis. You want the least amount of drag as possible so that blade can spin freely with little to no effort. So don't add anything above the clevis, you don't need to. Bead number, the number of beads that you use on your spinner is 100% based upon the size of the blade to get that proper spacing from the bottom of the blade to the top of the eye of the hook. So there is a real quick tutorial which ended up being, gosh, 12 minutes, sorry about that. It's kinda hard to cover everything in a short amount of time. But if you like to build spinners as much as I do, hopefully that helps. Get yourself out there, build a few spinners. It's a blast to catch them on it. And I'm sorry for this late post, but it's going to take a long time to upload this because it is now almost 13 minutes long. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you again tomorrow with an actual update from on the water because even though I'm supposed to have tomorrow off, I'm back on the water again. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Later. Go get them with spinners.